Oh, what, one second. One second. All right. Take your time, man. Mine says it's live. Yeah, we're going live here. Um, Sal and Turnado here with the Black Knight Nation podcast. Our Black, Black Knight Nation podcast is sponsored by Higher Echelon. Higher Echelon is a company run by Joe Ross. Joe Ross is a former Army fullback. He's a former Army assistant coach. He's a former Army officer. He's a former Black Knight – well, former. He's a Black Knight Nation podcast guest. We had Joe Ross on a couple weeks ago, and he had some really interesting stories. Uh, go to our Black Knight Nation YouTube channel. Check out the Joe Ross podcast. Very interesting. We had a, our recent guests are uh, Ahmad Bradshaw, Troy Lindley, and now we're welcoming in uh, – Guy who we wanted to get on the podcast for a while now, um, Army quarterback, 1984 Cherry Bowl offensive MVP. Correct, Nate? Long time ago, but you're right. Yeah, yeah. No doubt. Nate Sassaman. Yeah. Thanks for joining us tonight. No, we got no, it's great. Hey, I think Joe Ross and I are tied on the all-time rushing list for Army football. So kudos wow. to Joe Ross and higher echelon, man. That's awesome. Yeah, we really appreciate Joe stepping up and sponsoring us. And uh, yeah, that's awesome. We have a Black Knight Nation website has the latest in Army that's going on with the team. They're off to an 0 2 start, but um, they have Villanova this weekend. Just wrote a story on Cade Ballard, their quarterback. Um, I don't know how closely you follow the team, Nate, and if you uh, watch them, but um, you know, Cade threw for 200. And um, I know I saw that. I don't, um, I, I, I don't, I, I don't, I haven't followed it this season. I haven't had a chance to see them, but. But, you know, I, I noticed that I do like to read the box score and the write-up afterwards, and this, this kid seems to – they're throwing the ball. They're moving yeah. the ball, throwing it. Yeah, they are. It's a, yeah. it's it's very interesting. Now, let's get to your story, your recruiting story, and then we can talk about your time as, as quarterback for Army and okay. your journey right. to under center. Now, Steve Anderson can't be with us tonight. Yeah. Um, so what we're going to do tonight, we're going to make this part one yep. of – the Nate Sassman podcast. Sassman podcast. We're going to have Nate back on when Steve can join us because yeah. he brings that Army football brotherhood side of the podcast yeah, yeah, that we yeah, enjoy. Yeah. yeah. So uh, right now we're just going to do a little background. So, sure. Um, doing some research on you a little bit before the podcast, Nate. And so <laughs> you were you you were a quarterback in high school, right? I was a veer. I was a veer option quarterback um, out in Portland, Oregon. Yeah. Oh, wow. Wow. Yeah. And so how does Army find you or how do you find Army? So, oh, you know, um, Air Force recruited me heavily and it was Ken Hatfield and I think Fisher DeBerry. And I cannot, you know, I'm getting old now. I, I'm almost 60, but I cannot remember. But they got, I think it was Marty Louthan was a quarterback out of Eugene, Oregon, <laughs> that went to Air Force and had some success. And so I'm heavily recruited by these and they're running the triple option already. Mm -hmm. And I'm a veer option guy. But, you know, in the recruiting world, at least back in 1980, it was kind of like once one academy picked you up, you started kind of getting – it was a very small pool of athletes yeah. for each of the academies. And so um, I didn't get any interest from Navy, but but Army picked me up. Um, and um, and I did visits to both Air Force and Army. And I, I came back from that Army visit, and, and I think it was um, – Ed Cavanaugh would have been the head coach. Man, I, wow. the offensive coordinator was Jerry Wilson, I think. But Ed looked at me in my exit interview and said, Nate, you will play Army football here. Man, that's all you need to hear as an 18-year-old. That's all you need to hear. And, yeah. I mean, whether it was true or not, I don't know. And I know, you know, Ed's departed and everything. But it was like, I'm like, okay. And I was really impressed with the visit. The campus, I mean, it was no nonsense. I yeah. mean, it was like, I think I stayed with Al Winder. Wow. Um, I met the quarterback. The quarterback was T.D. Decker. Oh, wow. and, and so I'm meeting these guys, and they're basically saying, hey, this is how it works here. And if you don't want to come, don't come because it's hard. And and and, and I kind of like that. I kind of like it. Was there any military in your family? Um, no, you know, I have uncles on both sides that served. In the army, I have one uncle who served in Vietnam, one uncle who served in Korea. The rest were just all in the army, but um, um, not really. I mean, I was recruited by Oregon State and Oregon and Washington, mostly to be a defensive back, hmm. but I wanted to play quarterback. Um, and so Air Force and Army and then Idaho and Montana 
they were interested in me as a quarterback, but I just really had a great visit. Um, I had a great visit when I went to West Point. It was like, this is where I want to go, man. How was, so, so how do you, what's the commitment process like back then? Do you tell Ed Kavanaugh right there you're coming or do you go home and then oh, decide? No, I get home. no, no, you go home and I kind of figured some things out. And then, um, and then I committed to army. I don't think we had to do it by the, we, I don't know if we had to do it by the signing date or not. I can't remember, but I know I went, I didn't commit right there. I went home, talked to my parents and, and then just said, Hey, this is where I'm going to go. I'm going back right. East. I want to go, <laughs> I want to go play football back East. Yeah. Were you originally from the, from, uh, from my the mom and dad are from Pennsylvania and we have a ton of family in the East and all my relatives said, um, only, only real footballs played out east. What, whatever you guys do out west, that's not real football. So nope. that yeah, had nobody. a little bit of an influence. But I was just really – I mean, you go to West Point for the first time, it's really impressive. I mean, yeah. it's – I was like, yeah. And the visit was totally different from the Air Force visit and, and no judgment. But West Point laid it out. And it was kind of like, this is hard, this is hard, this is hard. If you think you're up for the challenge, come on back. And I was like, yeah, I'm up. Let's do it. Yeah. Yeah. It's quite similar these days with the the recruiting battles between Army and Air Force are quite intense, to be honest with you. It has I come to be. To yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. and there's there's stories about certain tactics that are used on no the doubt. other side. And, no you doubt. know, the list of Army – uh, former f- football players or list of West Point grads who are no longer with us because they served with the Army. And, you know, it's just like yeah. that's a little bit too much. It is. Me. And I should have – I mean, if I was doing a pure football decision, I should have gone to Air Force. They were already running the triple option. Mm. Fisher DeBerry was in my living room like I don't know how many times. I mean, they wanted me there. and But I just had a great visit. And I wanted – and and Army wasn't – Army was running like a, a pro set kind of – kind of a double option, but kind of a rollout throwing kind of offense. And I, but, but to me, it was, it was more about the place and what it stood for. And that just really resonated with me. Yeah. And I think back then probably air force is the more established uh, program on the winning, uh, winning football, right? Army was, Army was struggling. Yeah. Yeah. No, (laughs) Army was, yeah, they weren't winning. But when Ed Cavanaugh looked at me and said, you're going to play football at West point. I was like, that's, I didn't need to hear anything else, man. I was yeah. like, I just so, needed so, to talk to my mom and dad and and just lock it in. So I'm trying to think of the Army football coaching history tree here. So Ed Cavanaugh, how does he stick around when you're when you get there or no? No, well, well, he's yeah, he's there for the, the he's there for my freshman and sophomore year. Okay. And believe it or not, you know, I start my sophomore year, and then hmm. I get I get hurt a couple of times during that season. But I start the first four games. I, you know, I think we go one and three or two and two. I can't remember. And mm-hmm. then, um, and then I started a couple games later, but against, I started against Pittsburgh and I got blindsided and I separated my shoulder and that was kind of the end of the year. That was, that was the end of the year for me. So yeah, he's there the first two years. Jim Young comes in, in 1983 and that's my junior year. And I get moved to defense Yeah, because he goes with the whole pro set five yeah. step, seven step drop back passing game from Purdue it doesn't, we have it. we struggle. We're two and nine. Yeah. And then he's like, Hey, we're switching it over. And he kind of like, Hey, all comers can try out for this option offense. And that, and, and that was my, that was my bread and butter in high school. Yeah. And, and, so, and I had a really good off season and a good fall camp and I win the starting job. Nice. Freshman year, you're, 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 you're playing quarterback, right? Freshman yeah, year. I'm a quarterback my freshman year. I think I'm the third, I'm the third string. Oh, wow. And, and you see me, um, I play in a half a day. I play in three or four games. I, I definitely play in Pittsburgh at Pittsburgh. Wow. Um, there's some other games. I mean, oh, I play against Columbia. I play against Princeton. I'm in three or four games, mostly at the end. Yeah. Um, as 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 a plebe, and I went out to Missouri, and you know I'm the holder. So you know it, we do the we play Navy. We tie them three to three, and I'm I'm the holder for for Dave Coins field goal. Wow! In that game, I'm I'm out there the whole, as the holder. So, wow! So I got I got to play in most of the games, at, you know, uh, on special teams, and then and then I did I did a little bit of quarterbacking in the fourth quarter, when when the game was out of reach and we they were substituting in the backups. 
Yeah, so so Ed Kavanaugh was true to his word there that you would you would play that you, you yeah you, you play I don't know if Ed knew what he, I don't know if Ed knew what he was saying or not, but he <laughs> said the right things. I like Jerry Wilson, and then uh, who was your quarterbacks coach? Yeah, that was Jerry Wilson, my okay. freshman year, and then um, and then Charlie Taft comes in. Oh wow! You know Charlie's hmm. passed. Yeah, um, but he was uh, yeah no I. I was yeah, good offensive was, mind, Charlie Taft. Right? Yeah, I know Charlie was Charlie was solid, man. Charlie was solid. I still stay in contact with um Tory Car Crawford and Rob Healy. And we all three were in the quarterback's room with with Charlie and uh hmm. we all love Charlie Taft. We we love Charlie Taft. Yeah, you know? that was a, that, that's a good group. So so sophomore year, like you said, you're able to get you, you get into the, the starting lineup and yeah, I'm in the starting lineup, but it's a tough deal. And you know, we win. I think we win up at Princeton. Oh, I can't remember. And then I get hurt against Rutgers, I think, or before Rutgers, um, somewhere in there. And so I'm out for a stretch. I come back. I think I start against Pittsburgh. I get hurt again. It was sophomore year was a tough deal. I think we go, um, we're three and eight. We go four and seven. We're three and eight my freshman year. We're four and seven my uh, sophomore year. And then the staff is fired. Ed, Ed, Coach mm -hmm. Kavanaugh, the staff is fired after the sophomore year. And, and when then that's when. What's he? So he's running a pro style offense. Kavanaugh's yeah. running a pro style. Yeah, yeah, pro style. Yeah, pro set offense. Yeah. So what they did that? a lot of them. Um, rollouts rolling me out i think we had you know dicky laughlin was one of the quarterbacks um oh i can't remember the other guy that was from pennsylvania there's three of us and we kind of rotated through gotcha so it wasn't like anybody had a had a lock had a lock on the job and yeah, then um and yeah it was just yeah was yes sick. so i mean and then like Young comes in, like you said, junior year, and all of a sudden, like it's it's even more of a pro, I guess, a, a extended like a it's pro, pro style. style. So you got Rob Healy and Bill Turner. They they're starting. They're they're the they're the quarterbacks. Those two guys. They're they're young guys. I'm a junior. Those two guys would have been sophomores. And you know, and he's trying to run that Purdue offense at at West Point, and it we struggle. Oh, little little known fact: Nate leads the team in punt returns. His junior year. And I'm going to tell you, you haven't lived. You haven't lived until you've returned punts. That has got to be one of the scariest things on the face of the earth because you got like a herd of elephants just pounding down on you. And, uh, and you got to catch that ball and, and, and run with it. That was, uh, yeah, you, you grow up real fast when you're the punt returner. But, I should um, I should know this. You take any to the house that take any punts? No, 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 no. I would love no, there's probably a couple, man. I was just trying to catch the ball and survive. No, I mean, I maybe had a couple of 15 or 20 yard returns, but nothing to the house. Not, not back then. And, and we're the, this is a, this may seem like an odd question, but was there fair catching back then or no? Yeah, there was fair catching, but you know, Nate's a little crazy and you know, I'm a little off and I just didn't believe in fair catching. So um, that was, that was never really an option. I probably should have, if I'd been, you know, I went, I'm an infantry officer. So, you know, there's, there's some, there's some brain cells missing. So I, I should have fair caught a couple of those, but, but I didn't, I, I didn't fair. I don't think I fair. I don't think I ever did the fair catch signal once. Really? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. That's crazy. So That's you're all. taking some pretty big hits then, right? I'm I'm yeah, but you know, I'm a wishbone quarterback. So I definitely took some shots. I was just all, all, yeah, I played. Sal, I played at like 5'10", 180. I am not a big guy. I'm yeah. not a big guy out there. I was always, you'll see in the pictures in my senior year, I'm the smallest guy in the field huh. uh, playing quarterback. And it's, you know, you just you just really appreciate the big guys up front, you know. No, no doubt. Um, junior year, you're playing DB. You're playing corner? Um, free, free safety, and I'm splitting time there with several, yeah, with several of the different DBs. Yeah. I'm not great. I'm not bad, but I'm not great. I'm I'm okay, but I get burned a couple of times. But I also we were down in Louisville. I made a big time hit, caused a fumble right nice. on the goal line. I mean, I made some big time plays, but I also got burned. I got burned a little bit too. I mean, that was a new position for me. Johnny yeah. Burnett was the defensive backs coach. Uh, yeah. Johnny Burnett had recruited me. He was the West Coast recruiter. 
So, yeah. you know, I got a, I got a tight bond with Johnny Burnett. He and I connected a few years back and we probably talked for four hours without even, without even breathing. Wow. Um, he's another great, great army football coach. Um, yeah. You know, just a lot of great players. He recruited a lot of, he had California, Oregon and Washington. He brought a lot of kids from the West coast all mm. the way back there to West Point. And, you know, that's no small feat to go that far to play ball. Yeah, no doubt. I mean, cool. it, yeah. Yeah. Today, right. The recruiting, they're, they're trying to make some roads into the Oregon and Washington area. California is always going to be, you're always going to get guys out of California, yeah, you're gonna, right? You're going to get players from California. Yeah. Yeah. They're trying, um, I'm trying to think of, but they've, they've got a couple of young guys on their team that are from like the Pacific Northwest. Um, yeah. So, yeah. uh, We'll see. We'll see if those. Yeah, guys it's a tough. I mean, when I think about it now, when I've gone back a couple of times, I even from I base out of Denver, Colorado, and I'm like, I can't believe I flew all the way from Portland to to New York to go to to go to school. That's crazy. Um, I can't imagine. Yeah, I can't it's a, imagine. It's a it's a long it's a long flight. It's a long deal. Um. Yeah, but that was that that was that was it. And Johnny Burnett was great as a recruiter. He was great as a coach. And he's he's a great as a, a mentor and a, and, and a human being. We had some really great great coaches on staff. When we changed that staff, and Coach Young came in, Coach Taft stayed on. You know, Coach Burnett is on there. You know, you got Bob Sutton as the defensive coordinator. There's some really really quality coaches yeah. that were on that were that were on that staff with him. Yeah, they talk a lot about like the, the coaching trees, right? And uh, yes. You know what, like Jim, even a Jim Young had had really great assistants, and Sutton had some really, really solid. You, you're gonna put together pretty solid staffs at Army, no doubt. Yeah, and even, I know. Yeah, I think because I, I think Bob went on to be at the with the Jets, right? He was like the he 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 went to the pros. Yeah, um, Jets. Well, he was the head coach, and then yeah. he went to the pros. And and funny thing, every year I don't talk to Bob Sutton except every year, the morning of the Army Navy game. I get a text from Bob Sutton every single year that says, go Army, beat Navy. That's it. It's the That's only it. time I hear from him all year is the morning. He's the only guy who does that. And then that and then Charlie, I think, went on and coached at the Citadel. Yeah, he and did. I think he had some great success there. So, yeah, yeah we had a great OC, a great DC, and we had yeah. a great head coach. He was Charlie was always mentioned as a candidate for the West Point job when the West when Army's co head coaching job was open just because of that background. Um, was that a group text or was that a personal text? No, no, no that's Bob just to me. Oh, that's wow. a private. That's a private text. I probably he's probably not going to text me now that I've I've spilled the beans. But uh, but I always think that's kind of cool because he was the defensive coordinator. And we didn't have a lot of contact. Yeah, because I'm on the offense. If you know anything yeah. about college football. The offense yeah. guys kind of stay with them and the defense guys stay on their side and you don't have a lot of crossover except Johnny Burnett coached me and, and Bob's the DC, but I mean, we didn't, but I love that. He does that. I think that's Respect. special. And I yeah, think so that's, you know, it's special when you play at army, it's special. There's just, it's different from other schools. And how cool is it that like 30, 35, 37 years later, you know, the defense coordinator sends me a text every Army Navy game. What What did it mean to you to be an Army football player? What What What, what was that all about for you? Like once you know, you heard all about it. I'm sure when you're on your recruiting trip, but then once you put on the jersey and you know start playing games, what did it mean to you? Well, it was a tough deal the first three years, Sal. Mm -hmm. I mean, come on, yeah, three and eight, four and seven, and two and nine. Yeah, it, 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 you're slog, you're slogging away, and you're not having a lot of success. And it's a hard place to go to school. Mm. You know, I, I sometimes I run across guys who go, man, I, I, I love my time at West Point. It was hard for me. Yeah. Everything at West Point was hard. There was nothing easy. And and so I think about that every now and then, Sal, not a lot, but a little bit. But if we hadn't had that much success my senior year, you know, those might have become the four forgotten years for me because those were hard, mm. hard years. And and I, I mean, I just there's a lot of um pride that I got to be a chance. I just, I'm I just, it was just an honor to, to have a chance to be a part of a team that helped flipped, helped yeah. flip the, the win loss record. 
And, yep. and then and it kind of kicked off a nice streak of of wins and bowl games and success mm. that frankly you hadn't seen in a long time. No, three and, out of five, three of the next five years, you guys go to bowls. And I mean, yeah, I think like, they go to bowls 84, 86, and 88. And you know, everybody talks about the 84 teams, the first big bowl game. I'm like, hey man, the 1967 team was invited to the Sugar Bowl. That's really the first bowl team for Army. And they yeah. don't get credit for that. Good point. So they, 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 you know, and it's the, and it's a bad decision. I'm going to tell you, you know, people who know me, I tell it like it is bad call. Army should have gone to the sugar bowl in 1967. Bad call to not send them there. I know there's a war going on. Bad call. That would have really? done a lot for the army and for the, the West point and for the folks that were serving our country to send them to that sugar bowl in 1967. So that's the first, that's the first bowl team. And I always look at it that way. They didn't get a chance to go. Yeah. Because they had, they had nothing to do with that decision. Bad decision. Um, but they're the first bowl team. And then Perfect. we're, you know, we're the second one and we get a chance to go and, and, you know, and we're lucky enough to not lucky enough, man. That was, that was a war and, and we, and, and we win it, but there's good teams, 67, 72, 77, yeah. and then 84. But there's not a lot of great, you know, a lot of not not a lot of winning seasons between in there, yeah. in there. And, and, and so, the thing, the thing too, is the the rivalries, right? The the Air Force and the Navy rivalries. We were talking at that point. Air Force is a pretty strong program, and I'm not sure. Like your record against your record against Navy in your time was. Do you remember what it yeah, was? Yeah, we tied them. We tied them my plebe year. Yeah, we we lose my sophomore junior year, and we we win my. Okay. In my senior year. So, I mean, what's, what's that? One, two, and one. Yeah. And then, and then Air Force, I think we, uh, oh, I can't, we, we lose the first three and then we win. We, oh, wow. Air Force is in 84. It's the first night game at Mikey ever. And it's on ESPN. Huh. Talk, to, talk to me about ever, that. Yeah. First night game ever is Air Force at Mikey. And it's still funny. It's a, it, it's still kind of a hard game. And I had three broken ribs, so I didn't get to, Rob Healy starts that game. I, I I play sparingly, and I'm holding for Craig Stopa, who kicks five field goals that night. Jeez. But but that is that's the first night game at at West Point, and I think it's the first time both Army and Air Force are ranked in the top 25. I mean, it's a Perfect. big it, it's a big deal. And if you go back and look at it, you know it's kind of funny. I know a couple of the Air Force players from that game. They they called a pass play. They they down the ball like on the two or five yard line. They call a pass play uh, like a swing pass on their first play from scrimmage, and I don't know who tackles the receiver, but we tackle them in the end zone for a safety. We're hmm. ahead two zero, and it's like game on. Let's go! Wow, yeah, it's... that must have been like. I mean, I can't imagine. I know you said you didn't get a chance to play much in that game because you were injured, but just yeah. being around that environment, right huge. back then, yeah, because huge. yeah. I got in on a couple of series in the second half, but I had broken my ribs the week before. So it was, it was, yeah, I didn't, I, I didn't want to take any shots uh, anymore, any, any more shots. Cause Nate, with all due respect, right. I was at the home opener last Saturday against Texas San Antonio and okay. Okay. Yeah. Mikey stadium's like a little over half full, but when Mikey yeah. stadium is packed and that rocking. place is rocking, Rocking. There may not be a better place in college football. It may be. I, mean, I know it's rocking. It's a, it's a serious home advantage, and I don't know what to. You know, it's hard to it's hard to put it into words because we've had so much. In my opinion, Army football has had so much success, and Coach Monken and the staff have done just a spectacular job of of setting this program up for success year after year after year after year. We didn't have that. There was not that feeling back then with the core. It was like we were not good and we did not have winning seasons. So when we got into that, we got into some success my senior year and we get to that Army Navy or Army Air Force game and we're both ranked and it's yeah. at Mikey and it's the first night game ever. I can't even I can't even tell you what the atmosphere it was rocking. It was rocking. Yeah. And it was on and on live TV and they brought in all these light sets. I mean, it was just amazing. It was, it was an amazing experience. And then we come out on top as it should yeah. be right. As it should yeah. be. <laughs> yeah. Now that year, right. 
you had some, you know, like you said, beat uh, Michigan State in the bowl game, beat Navy, beat Air yep. Force. Is that Air Force? Does that Air Force game stand out the most out of all those games or now? No, you know, for me, and I think for a lot of players, we go down to Tennessee 30 point underdogs mm, in week man. two. We have no business being on the football field with the University of Tennessee. I get behind, I can tell you right now, Sal. I could still remember getting behind Ron Rice at center on the first play of the game and looking out at the UT volunteer defense. And I got a, like a lump in my throat and it was like, Nate, you better have your a game today. Cause every one of those dudes are better than you. They had legit athletes. And so we played out of our minds down there and nobody gave us a chance. Yeah. And, and, you know, I'll, I'll never forget, you know, Coach Young, we score. I mean, I, you know, I'm fortunate enough to score with about a minute left. We have a, an 80-yard drive to come back and tie the game or, or make it 24 to 23. And Coach is like, we're going for the extra point because a tie back in those days was a win for Army. That was a win for us. Mm. And, you know, it's kind of one of those headlines, Army wins at Tennessee 24 to 24. I mean – yeah. And, and, and it would have been, it would have, and, you know, and coach Young's philosophy was if we, if we'd gone for two and didn't get it, we lose 24 or 23 and it's another mm. loss for the army team, but a tie when we're 30 point underdogs, that was huge. That, that I think was the catalyst to this, to the season. Yeah. I was going to, I was going to ask you what you think changed that year, your senior year. Uh, did you have any input with him about, did you, did you agree? Did you want to go for two and no, go man, for no, no input? No, <laughs> no, we'll, we'll talk about this in part two, because I got a couple things to talk about with coach young, no input. <laughs> coach young was in charge. I frankly feared coach young. All right? Really? There was not a, there was not a collegial setup. There was coach young and then everybody else. <laughs> so it was really clear who the, how the chain of command worked and and kind of how that he did. There was no breaking the principle of warfare there with unity of command. He, he was the guy in charge. He made all the decisions you just executed. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, you think starting quarterback, you know, would have some say. No, like, no. You know, yeah. He was, he's, I mean, he's a really, really good guy. And, 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 uh, and prior to the season, he had me over to his house for dinner with Jane and their son at the time. And it was really kind of like, I want to like lay out my, he laid it out. He goes, this is how it's supposed to. Be. And I just listened, you know, I'm yeah. coach young is God as far as I'm concerned. So it's like, he laid it out and says, we're trying to shrink the games to the fourth quarter. Huh? I need you to not make any mistakes. Just manage the game to the fourth quarter. And if we're within a touchdown or so, Teams are going to panic and you don't know what can happen in the fourth quarter, but we got to get to the fourth quarter. So we need to control the football, not turn it over, you know, stay on course. And that he was straight up. And I, I never had anybody have me over for dinner. And, you know, you take all those etiquette classes at West Point on what fork to use and what spoon to use. And I was like, I was a nervous wreck um, having that. You know, it might have well, it might as well have been God having me over for dinner. So, um, so yeah, I just took it all in, and I, I, you know, I just, I just bought in with, I bought in with how he wanted me to run the offense as if I was him on the field. There was not a lot of freelance in Sal. This was nah. Coach Young's. This was Coach Young's program. No audibles. No audibles. Uh, maybe one, maybe one against Syracuse. And we score a touchdown, and I could still hear him yelling at me as I'm jogging off the field for changing the play. Right <laughs> um, now, 30, 37 years <laughs> later, I can still hear him from like 40 yards away screaming at me, and we scored a touchdown. <laughs> <laughs> Unreal. Unreal. Hey, before we are all good. It's all good. We're gonna have another. We're gonna have a second part of this when yeah, Steve Anderson can join us. But I really want to just, I guess, to wrap this up. Now, please miss, um, forgive me for not knowing this. When you go your senior year, you change over to a wishbone offense, right? Right. Yeah. Talk Triple to me a little bit about sure. that. What, what was that was like? Because you know, growing up, right? Me when I grew up, I 
play the video games and there'd be I would want to play use the wishbone teams because it seemed like there was a fun offense to be in right yeah. and just the the different options that you had right so yeah. Talk yeah. to me a little. Did you have? I guess you had to put in a lot of work in the spring in the off season to get. I did, and you know it's kind of funny. Doug Black and I were in the same company there at West Point. Our tactical officer was Bob Caslin, who ends up being a superintendent later yeah. on. But I don't know, man. Doug and I probably practiced. I don't know, ten thousand handoffs in the spring, and then we wow. another ten thousand in fall camp. I mean, they actually drew the lines out. And we work the mesh over and over again. And, you know, if you don't have a solid fullback, it's not going to work. You've mm-hmm. got to have a threat at fullback to open it up on the outside. And Doug was a beast. Yeah. He's a beast. And we just worked that mesh over and, you know, thousands of reps. Wow. Over and over and over again. And then, you know, and I'm just kind of a, I guess, I don't know, I'm a fast paced kind of an action guy. And so I got really... I got really decent at reading and you see it in the Tennessee game. I think I grayed out like on the pure triple option, pure triple option where I'm reading the tackle to the end. I'm 23 to 25. I still remember that Charlie wow. Taft bringing it up and going through. And I'm like, I'm nailing the reads and Ooh. I have to, because those guys are killers on the other side of the, the other side of the ball. And, and so it really starts, I think with, with Doug and I being able to like have that, um, that ball handling piece. And then, and then it opens it up on the outside for me. And, 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 you know, I had Clarence Jones, I had William Lampley, I had D Bryan, I had Jarvis Hollingsworth. We were rotating, hmm. rotating guys in that were fresh and that, you know, they, they could run the ball. So. Yeah. I really, I really wanted to make a point of this and I don't think I did a good job in the introduction that you were kind of the, you were kind of the, the first kind of like true triple option. I am. Yeah. I am to first, a point at army, yeah. right? I am Army's first wishbone quarterback. Yeah. 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 And so that, and then you look at the guys who fouled, and, you know, we hear a lot about Ronnie McAda, right? And we hear a Ron, lot yeah. who we had on. We had well, Rob Ronnie Healy and Ronnie McAda can throw the ball. Now, now you're talking about Ballard and all his throwing last week. Yeah. I threw 98 pass attempts my senior year total, mm-hmm. 12 games, 98 passes total. I think Ballard threw 20 or 25 passes last week. I mean, yeah. he's already like on his way. And I completed yeah. Sal 49 and 98. So so I, I'm 50%. I mean, I'm not great, but <laughs> but we we yeah, we ran the ball. We didn't throw it. Rob Healy threw it. Ronnie McKay to throw it really re, threw it really well, which I think also loosens up the defense. Sure. A little bit. But there were some games where it was we're coming at you and it is gonna be triple option run football all the way. Well, you look at the Jeff Monk and Era, right? And they've had some games where they haven't completed a pass or haven't You're even right. attempted the pass. Yeah. Was yeah. it like that? You guys would throw uh, in the year? Michigan State, I threw the ball two times. I like to say this. I ended my career against Navy and Michigan State seven for seven. Hmm. In Navy, I threw four to my team and one to their team. And at Michigan State, I threw one to my team and one to their team. So I'm 100% my last seven throws. Um, but, but yeah, we did not throw the ball a lot, Sal. We, we ran the ball. I don't know if we had a game where we never threw it. Um, cause Rob Healy always wanted to get in and throw the ball a little bit, Okay. Um, yeah, yeah. but we didn't throw it a lot. We did not, we don't, we did not throw it as much as like Ronnie did and as how much they're doing right now. With yeah. Coach Monk, and no way, not not even close. It's it's. I did I did want to like I said the introduction. I I got to work on the introductions, Nate, yeah, because I you did. were the first. You know, you were the first like uh, triple option quarterback to, right? And it's just yeah. like now you, you know. Then you mentioned Tory Crawford, right? You yeah. mentioned um, uh, Brian McWilliams is another one that comes. Yeah, to mind. yeah, Brian McWilliams. Yeah, there's some yeah. great. There's some Tory. I mean, Tory Crawford was the man. I mean, he's. Yeah. He, he, yeah, he, yeah, whew. he was quick. He had fast feet. He had the, he had the whole package. I just feel fortunate. I got to be, I got to be at the start. That's all I can say. Yeah. Uh, and, right. And we, and had you look cast of, we had a good cast of coaches and we had a really heavy senior led team. There's a lot of seniors on the, on the team. And we kind of had enough of the losing thing. Yeah. And it was kind of like, Hey, we're just going for it. We got nothing to lose. We're just going for it. 
for that turnaround to happen, you have to have that, I think, right? Yeah, yeah. That, your, your group has to be made up of those guys. Steve, just, Steve, yeah. will, Steve will talk about tw- the 2010 team that brought winning back to Army, right? First yeah. winning team since 96. That's yeah. a bunch of seniors. Him, Josh McNary, uh, Mike Gann, yeah. Donovan yeah. Travis. Their, their defense was full of seniors. And, you know, they had the young yeah. quarterback in Trent Stillman getting it yeah. done. But you um, got to just play with reckless abandon and just go for it. <gasps> Nothing yeah. to lose. Yeah, and uh, yeah. man, it, that would that, and I think that sometimes, um, maybe I I say this a lot in army hi- history, but maybe because it, we're in the current time, but sometimes that '84 team maybe it's a little bit of a forgotten team, so to speak. Like nowadays, yeah. it's great to hear your stories, yeah. Nate, about you know yeah. the games and just dealing with Coach yeah. Young and the guys you had. The one. I also want to mention one more thing before we go about the, the, okay. the, the wishbone, right? You said the fullback and you work with the mesh, you know, 10,000 times. Oh, yeah. You have to have also that relationship with your center too, right? I mean, oh, that has to be yeah. true. I will tell you, you know, Ron and I haven't talked in a long time, but when we were together last time, I'm at Tennessee. There's over 100,000 fans there. Ron goes, I cannot hear you calling the signals at Tennessee I am hiking the ball when I feel the pressure on your hand come up Hmm. and I'm screaming the signals out and my center cannot hear them. Hmm. And and we're just all going off the ball down in, down in general Neyland stadium where it's just crazy. And, and you're right. You know, there's a lot of, there's a lot of things that have to like, just, Oh, and that, I think it just fit our mentality at army that, we're, we're yeah. disciplined and we're going to rep it thousands of times and, and we're going to be able to go in and deal with the adversity. And, 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 and that, that I feel like the Tennessee game was the, was the turning point for that, for the program and for that yeah. year. It's a big game, no doubt. Um, yeah. In that Tennessee game, how the center uh, quarterback exchanges, were you guys sharp or you, were you dead yeah, on that sharp. game? They were sharp. I mean, Coach wow. Young, I forget where we were at. I mean, I, I received a, an award with Doug Flutie down at the down at the man, I forget it was the the Heisman Hotel, wherever that the downtown athletic club. But yeah. it wasn't it was a different award. And and when coach introduced me, he said, you know, out of over like a thousand snaps, we only we only Nate only had I only um I, I had two turnovers, well, two fumbles, and one I recovered and one I didn't. Um, out of over a thousand snaps, and we never had a bad we never had a bad snap. Ron and I never had a we never had a fumbled snap the whole year. So wow. it was it the was whole your whole either, senior either year. The pitch was either the pitch was a little off, yeah. or um, or I got hit and fumbled. Wow, two times, two times, and over a thousand touches. That's that's incredible. And that's you know incredible. the deal. You got You know you got to you got to win the turnover game. That's win winning football, but that's yeah, winning football win right there, right? Yeah, that helped us, no doubt. Well, like we said, uh, this is this has been really fun, really great to hear the stories from from Nate Sassaman. Um, Steve Anderson, our co-host, is not here tonight, but we're going to do a part two. And Nate, I mean, save save some good stories for part two. You're no, I got mentioned. a lot of good stories. I got yeah. a lot. I got a lot of. We're and going we'll, into ancient history, so so I can I, I remember all the good ones. I don't remember the bad ones as much, but. I remember all the good ones. <laughs> we appreciate it, guys. If you were watching or are you are you hitting the replay on this on, on YouTube or on, on Twitter, please uh, give our YouTube channel a subscribe. We hit 500 subscribers this week. We're very proud of that. We're looking to head toward 1,000, and then maybe we can get monetized. And check out our, um, you, uh, check out our Black Eyed Nation website. Check out all our social medias, um, Twitter and uh, Instagram, too. I'm going to be breaking down snap counts. To, I'm going to be watching um, film on uh, UTSA film tonight. Once we get out off the podcast, Nate, okay. I'm going to do snap counts from that game. And man, I can't wait for part two with Nate Sassam and Nate. It's been a pleasure. And we'll, we'll do this again when we can get, when we can get Steve on. So sounds good. Thanks, Sal. I mean, all best and, and, and go army and beat Villanova. <laughs>